अपन दो लोगों की सुनता था मेघनाथ और कुंभकरण वैसे ही नरेंद्र मोदी दो लोगों की सुनते हैं अमित शाह और अटानी सत्ता के बिना ऐसा हाल किसी का हो जाता है सत्ता सुख के बिना जी नहीं सकते आप पूरे देश में कैरोसिन फेंक रहे हो पूरे देश में आप कैरोसिन फेंक रहे हो आपने मणिपुर में कैरोसिन फेंकी और फिर चिंगारी लगा दी जब मणिपुर में हर व्यवस्था उग्रवादी संगठनों की मर्जी से थी किसकी सरकार थी मैं कांग्रेस की मुसीबत समझता हूं बरसों से एक ही फेल प्रोडक्ट उसको बार बार लॉन्च करते इस सदन में एक ऐसे नेता है जिनको आज तक तेरह बार राजनीति में लॉन्च किया गया और तेरह ही बार फेल गए ये घमंडिया गठबंधन देश में परिवारवाद की राजनीति को सबसे बड़ा प्रतिबिंब है कि विपक्ष के लोगों को एक सीक्रेट वरदान मिला हुआ है ये लोग जिसका बुरा चाहेंगे उसका भलाई ही होगा Hello and welcome. We're back. That's right. Uh, the mood of the nation. India today's biannual tracker of the mood of the country is back. And it is bigger than ever before or more important than ever before because this poll done by C voter comes with less than a year to go for the big general election. So Rahul and I are bringing you the findings that could set the tone for what lies ahead, the battle for 2024. Let's take you through the methodology adopted by C voter for this uh, mood of the nation opinion poll. This is India's number one political barometer. Uh, 25,951 respondents interviewed across all states. An additional sample of 1,34,487 from the seawater tracking data, which goes on continuously even outside the MOTN exercise. So that's a total sample size of a whopping 1,60,438. Uh, the interviews for this poll were conducted between the 15th of July and the 14th of August, and the lead cephologist of Sea Water, Yashwan Deshmukh, is with us in the studio. Yashwan, deeply appreciate you taking our time and joining Rajdeep and me here. Raj Chingappa, editorial director, publishing is with us as well. He and his team have worked on dissecting these numbers, analyzing them. He'll share his insights in just a moment with us. Uh, for political perspective on this broadcast, senior Bharatiya Janata Party spokesperson Nalin Kohli squaring off against him. From the Congress, we have Rohan Gupta. Uh, we have Ashok Malik, partner at the Asia Group. And we have Rahul Verma from the Center for Policy Research. Okay, over the next couple of hours, we'll be building to the big numbers. Who would win an election if it's held today? But you've got to wait for that because we've got plenty of more data lined up for you. Lots has happened since our last tracker in January. So there's lots to look forward to. The first big number. Rahul, go ahead. Okay, let's track first the performance of the NDA. Uh, how many people think the government is doing a good job? What percentage of people think the government isn't doing a good job? At this moment, 59% of the respondents in the Mood of the Nation poll uh, in August 2023 are telling Seawater that they like what the government is doing. 19% say they are dissatisfied. In January this year, 67% of the respondents had said they were satisfied with the government's performance. So from there, uh, it's down to 59%. But if you go back, say, to August 2020 and take a look at the numbers, it's largely been in the 60s, 
fell in August 21 into the mid 50s. January again, late 50s, 59%. Uh, follows the rough line. Basically, the key point to look at over there is that there is a 40% gap between those who think the government is doing a good job and those who are dissatisfied. Uh, so, Rajdeep, on the first point, it seems people largely seem satisfied with the government. Yashwant, you want to kick off by giving us your initial thoughts? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, over, the, over the, all these years that we have been doing MOTN and the trackers, I think, Rahul, overall satisfaction has been pretty much in sync with the line of the popularity of the Prime Minister and everything in Nango. Barring that one bump that you have seen that post second wave of COVID, that is precisely where we have seen the numbers going down and dissatisfaction going up. But apart from that, it is more or less in the same line. It has gone down slightly bit and we have seen there is a direct correlation of inflation with that. Whenever the inflation pinches up, these satisfaction numbers slightly come down and this satisfaction slightly goes That's deep. To keep the needle moving, let's take a look at the biggest achievements and biggest failures of the Modi government. When the question was asked, what do you think of as the biggest achievement of the Modi government? Interestingly, the data seems to suggest that 21% of the respondents felt the handling of the COVID crisis was the number one achievement of the Modi government. This has been uh, the Achilles heels of governments world over and that seems to come out to be the number one achievement of the Modi government. Coming in at number two is the fact that people believe that this is a corruption-free government. At number three is the revocation of Article 370. You know, when I look at these early numbers, what it suggests is that there was an inflection point for uh, Prime Minister Modi. The challenge for him was August 2021. That's the one time, Raul, in the mood of the nation, and we can stretch this back not just to term two, but term one, where Prime Minister Modi actually seemed to have a significant dip in popularity. What we've seen now, satisfaction levels have come down from 67 to 58. So there is some cause for worry. However, it is still relatively healthy, doesn't suggest anti-incumbency having set in. Anti-incumbency would set in, let's look at August, interestingly, 2013 of Manmohan Singh as Prime Minister. When Manmohan Singh's performance was rated below 50%, Prime Minister Modi's performance has been in and around 60%. At its peak, it's gone to 72%. Therefore, when people say COVID is the big achievement, in an ironical way, COVID was Prime Minister Modi's downturn after COVID 2.0, the second wave, but it's also become the, uh, the tipping point because once vaccination started in uh, 2022 in particular, the Prime Minister's popularity has risen again. So overall, I think that August was round the turning point. Let's take a look at the biggest failures of the Modi government and I want to bring Raj Chingappa in to talk about this because when the question is asked about the biggest failures, 25% of the respondents say price rise is the number one failure of the Modi government. Unemployment comes in at 17%. Economic growth or the perceived lack of economic growth comes in at 12%. Uh, price rise at 25%, Raj, uh, is that just an immediate concern? Or do you think building up to the 2024 elections, that could become a bigger issue? If you track our polls for the last, uh, say, six of them, they show price rise as well as in, uh, unemployment as the biggest issues, serious issues that are there. What is remarkable, and that's what I think we need to understand, is that normally a government at this stage, ninth, uh, in its 10th year, and this kind of uh, you know, economic reaction, dissatisfaction, should have made their numbers plummet, their popularity plummet. Instead, you're seeing that the uh, Modi government's uh, performance ratings are at 59%, down 10%, but still in the 10th year, and as uh, Rajdeep was saying, anti-incumbency should have set in, and as, as it happened in uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh's case in 2013, it hasn't happened. So we need to understand the phenomenon that, uh, uh, and let's also not forget that uh, if he calls it the inflection point, there were three major crises that happened during this period. COVID itself, the pandemic and the havoc it caused, the economic distress it caused across, and the Ukraine-Russia war, which caused inflation and a shortage of grains. Through this, any other leader would have been, you know, trembling and uh, the, the ratings would have fallen. He has held. So the larger point, I think, is that people believe that even though there might have been setbacks during COVID, he is the man for the job. 
They believe that, uh, uh, you know, he's been sincere, he's tried hard to do what he is doing, and that there is no other alternative to him. That so far, he has handled all these crises well, weathered the storm, and therefore you see the support that the government is getting. Nalin Kohli, and when I say he, to Prime you Minister Modi. The yeah. most important issues facing this government, issues that people believe will determine voting behavior. 24% said price rise was the number one issue. 24% uh, said unemployment was the number one issue. Poverty came in at 8%. At this moment, the government is trying various things on the issue of onions, tomatoes to bring prices down. How confident are you that building up to the 2024 general elections, that's the big political litmus test, price rise would be a lesser factor? Is that one of the key concerns that you would have while you're strategizing in terms of the BJP's approach for the elections, Mr. Kohli? Thank you, uh, Rahul. I think let me start with a preliminary point. There is a consistent position of popularity of Prime Minister Modi and his government, which broadly is in the late 50s, early 60s, goes up to 72% as per your mood of the nation. Now, interestingly, there are two factors here. There's leadership and performance. Normally, in the last maybe 20 years, 25 years that we've all been on television together, we note that these two sometimes are separate. Leadership is sometimes discussed separately and performance separately. But we have a unique situation since 14, and which is lucky for the BJP and the people of India are voting for that consistently, is that in Prime Minister Modi, you've got the leader who's also a performing leader. His government in terms of it, because it's a Modi-driven government, is clearly a performing government, and it's across. I mean, I can talk of several things, whether the fact that from 10, number 10 in the economy, global economy, we are at 5, whether we are at 50 crore bank accounts almost, Pradhan Mantri Jandhan, which is a financial inclusion. Poverty, which is at about 8%, Perhaps because 80 crore people still receive free rations every month, which started in COVID but has continued. It's a huge program. Or Ayushman Bharat, probably the biggest insurance-based program for health anywhere in the world. So, I mean, there's so much more I can say for the middle class others. So, let's pause for a minute. Yes, what you're just pointing out, price rise, and then you refer to unemployment. Obviously, these are causes of concern. But is the government working in that direction? Yes. That's the answer. This is not a government abdicating from its responsibility. This is not a government that does not understand that if something is going wrong, we need to find a solution. So it's a government with its ear to the ground. And if you ask me how confident I am, given not just the numbers, but given the performance, given the fact that this government is at it all the time, I think 2024 should, subject to, of course, the voters deciding that because we are a democracy, should be a smooth walk for the BJP and under Prime Minister Modi's leadership. Rohan Gupta, you know, anti-incumbency is what the opposition has been banking on, an element of fatigue. Uh, it doesn't seem to have set in. For all the attempts made by the opposition to raise these issues, it appears that while some of these issues like unemployment and price rise do resonate with voters, they do not translate into any kind of anger against the Modi government. That is very clear. This poll is not showing anger, particularly among those who voted for the BJP in 2019, because you need voters to switch for you to win an election next year. Rajdeep, I'll just remind you a small thing. Since last December, December 22 till date, there are four major state elections happened, and all four state BJP was in power. It was Gujarat, it was Himachal, it was MCD, obviously Delhi is big, so I'm just considering as a mm -hmm. small state, and, uh, and, and Karnataka. And all out of these four places, now BJP is only in one place, that is Gujarat. So don't you feel that is also mood of the nation? See, I'm not trying to question here the methodology of your poll and all, but we need to see the larger perspective where the nation is moving on. Same Mr. Modi, if you see Karnataka, it was the Mr. Modi's face, the whole election was fought. There was no other issue with BJP. It is only Mr. Modi. If these people are satisfied with Mr. Modi, if price rise and employment and poverty are not such big issues, then I think the same should have been resonated in all state elections. The way the polls, the other polls, I don't know whether India today has done poll till date now or not. Chhattisgarh poll or MP poll or, you know, many other polls, they are showing that BJP is again losing them. So I feel I, that, you know, it's the last... You're making a very interesting point which we should take to Ashok Malik and Rahul Varma because Ashok Malik, there is some disjunction between state poll verdicts that we've seen over the last six months and what our mood of the nation is showing. 
Do you think this reflects what many believe is a voter looking very differently when we ask him questions as to who do you want as your next prime minister or how do you rate the NDA government at the center versus how do you rate state governments, including state governments of the BJP? Uh, Rajiv, with due respects, uh, voters have been looking very different at state and uh, union government uh, elections uh, or uh, assembly and parliamentary elections for the past 15 or 20 years. This is hardly a new phenomenon. Uh, if you if you go back to 2009, when the Congress wins uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh with just about 50% of the seats, and on the same day, voters in Andhra Pradesh uh, vote for uh, three out of four of seats in Andhra Pradesh for the parliamentary election go to the Congress. And I can give numerous such examples. So people are clearly voting very differently, uh, looking for very different uh, leaders, looking for very uh, different parties and different issues uh, at the local level and at the national level. Uh, sometimes the, the voting preferences do coincide, but when they do coincide, it is, it is because they are local factors, granular factors that influence them in their local uh, provinces and in in local states. So uh, it's even the upcoming state elections in five states are going to be fought on very different issues and themes than the parliamentary right. election of, of May 2024. So that R goes Rahul Varma, you want to, Rahul Varma, you want a, a preliminary comment on that? Should we be looking at a, this firm disjunction between state election patterns, how voters perceive the center and the state? Is that something that is coming through already? Yes, I, I completely agree with Ashokji on this. Uh, we have seen, like, in past 10, 15 years, we are seeing this uh, pattern. There is a section of voters which basically switch sides. But more than that, I think I want to make two comments. First, on the achievements and failures, uh, the data you showed. See, what this does is basically, now we, have, now we are in an era where a large proportion of voters have already made their minds whom to vote. And so when they're listing the achievements and when they're listing the failure, you see two different things because the BJP side or BJP tilting voter is going to look at very different things and the opposition party voters are basically going to cite very different things, which means the achievements and failures actually offer uh, mobilizing strategies for different parties. BJP is going to basically build their campaign on the ideological issue of 370, corruption free government and those kind of things. And the opposition has uh, some chances using the economic thing. Second point, which is about the stability of, 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 of numbers on the uh, uh, performance as well as PM's rating. In short run, this is a good news for BJP. If the elections are becoming, and that's I think largely like what's happening in national state elections is Modi being on the ticket for national elections and being able to pull a large section of those undecided voters towards the BJP. In short run, this is a good news for uh, BJP, but I think in the medium to long term, this may also be an atlas heel for BJP because party has to also think what would happen post Modi. It's okay. very interesting, uh, Rahul, because, you know, just linked to that is the next question that you pose, because I think that will give you a sense of why people seem to look at uh, economy one, uh, in, in one way and look at issues linked to nationalism and pride in, in India in a different way. The question you've asked, which issue would help the BJP most in 2024? And the answer is 33% say PM's guarantee, guarantee the word of making India number three economy. Number two, Ram Temple, 17% and implementation of UCC, which has now come into in a way, the, uh, as, as a talking point, 12%. So you add all of that, that comes to 62% in a way. These are all issues which in a way are linked to both hin Hindutva as well as a sense of pride in the idea of India. We're going to be the number three. Why would you vote for the BJP in 2024? Prime Minister Modi, 44%. Development, 12%. Hindutva, 14%. So in a way, this moditva, this word that I like to take was asked, uh, from the from the voters who said that uh, they would vote for uh, that's right. BJP. So essentially, what you're yeah. saying, when I look at Prime Minister Modi plus Hindutva, it seems that Prime Minister Modi 44 percent versus Hindutva 14. So it's the Prime Minister's Prime Minister, persona. Yeah, yeah. Which Rajiv, seems there is to one more. Which seems yeah. to tower over other issues. The, apart from Prime Minister as the poll thing, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for the BJP in the in terms of getting the votes, there is one very interesting uh, number, uh, Rahul, which uh, 
I think if we get the graphic of uh, the most important issue here, I can walk, <laughs> walk it down to you because 10 years back when we were doing this poll, Raj, in, 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 in uh, August 2012, I remember very clearly that the first three issues, two of them remain the same. That is inflation and unemployment. The third issue at that point of time was corruption. And that is a very, very dangerous mix. You know, when you have inflation, unemployment, and corruption coming as a top three recall, then you have a definitive anger aimed at that, okay, we have got these two issues because of the third issues. Remarkably, in the last nine years, not even once in MOTN, we have got perceived corruption as counted as among the top issues or problem uh, that people are facing. And I guess that is a very, very big, uh, uh, you know, uh, differentiator as far as how people look at their problem and how people look at their solutions are concerned. Uh, uh, apart from Mr. Modi's popularity, I think that one issue stands out what we did in 10 years back, that data and today's data. It's just, precisely 10 years. I just like to, uh, you know, you could look at it the other way. Uh, in the previous polls, the biggest achievement used to be the building of Ram Temple, uh, all the Hindutva agenda, you know, revocation of Article 371. If you look now, it's changed towards COVID, handling of code, generally which symbolizes mm -hmm. Mr. Modi's competence as a prime minister and therefore even the other things. We will vote for Mr. Modi. We will vote for, when you take a look at uh, this business of making it a three million, I mean, uh, the, the third largest economy, that's an economic dream. It's not something to do with Hindutva. So while he has very neatly brought in the Hindutva and this thing, he's not, the projection for the people is economic. They would like to see the economy, and therefore, if you look at the failures, that's part of the problem. But they're also voting him back because they think that he's probably more competent than any of the others to handle the economy. The next question on the mood of the nation poll is who's best suited to be India's next prime minister? And here, Prime Minister Modi has we call like sticky popularity because 52 percent of the respondents in august 2023 are telling our pollsters that they would like for prime minister modi to be the next uh, prime minister now you can say that rahul gandhi's popularity in the last uh, year or so is up from nine percent to 16 but there frankly is no comparison because there is still the difference of earth day and light between the popularity of uh, Prime Minister Modi and that of Rahul who is clearly his uh, principal challenger. You know, Rahul, what, what this is showing is uh, an intangible factor called trust. You see, you are accepting that unemployment is a major issue, you are accepting price rise is a major issue and yet you are saying PM has guaranteed India is going to be number three economy, we trust Prime Minister Modi. You are saying therefore you are you see, the poll, the mood of the nation seems to look at politics now through the prism of either you are with Modi or not with Modi. So leadership is the critical question. Everything else gets subsumed. You see, you, you, you're worried about possible job losses. You're worried about price rise. But when you ask people, do you think Mr. Modi will make us third largest economy, which is not about the individual necessity. India will become the third largest economy. I think whether Mr. Modi is there or not. But the truth is people trust him when he gives a guarantee. And he's clever enough in his independence uh, day speech, Mary guarantee hai. Ye Modi ki guarantee hai. And so he's on. personalized he, everything. He said this first at the inauguration of the Bharat Mandapam, repeated it during Independence Day. Uh, and now people seem to think of that as the big catchy idea. Ashok Malik, what do you think of this? Because there are two ways of looking at it. You can become the third largest economy in the world and yet be 128 when it comes to per capita income. So obviously, it's not everyone becoming rich, but the economy is becoming rich. The richer are becoming richest uh, amongst the world. And yet, from the voters' perspective, they're really excited, it seems, about the prospect of India becoming the third largest economy in the world. No, two, two, two points here. Uh, I, I think this is being a little unfair. People are not voting for Narendra Modi or don't have trust in Mr. Narendra Modi just because they like his speeches. Uh, there is something tangible. It's not just promises. And I don't think any voter expects that all his or her problems will be solved in five years. But what pe voters look for is trust. What pe voters look for is effort. What voters look for is sincerity. Mr. Modi has been able to convey that he has all of these. Uh, yes, he has not provided everybody jobs. I agree. But 
uh, through economic distress, especially post-COVID economic distress, there has been targeted welfare. Uh, there have been targeted welfare programs. Uh, there has been a concerted effort over nine years to control inflation. It hasn't always been successful, but by and large, inflation in these past 10 years has been better managed than the UPA years. And voters tend to remember that. And uh, I'd like to come back to another point made earlier about the Hindutva vote and the, and the Modi factor. I think the Hindutva factor is important. The Hindutva vote is a very deep vote, and it turns out for Modi year after year, election after election. But the Hindutva vote is a deeper vote than a wider vote. It's deep. It's not necessarily wide. The wider vote is really the Modi brand, the Modi leadership vote, the, the, the vote that has trust in Modi's leadership, in his ability to take India forward, to take the Indian family forward. Yeah, but, you know, in, in a way, Nalin Kohli, there is a risk there because 40 more, why would you vote for BJP in 2024? 44% are saying Prime Minister Modi. 14% are saying Hindutva. I use the word Moditva. But it seems that the Prime Minister's popularity is such that it is pulling your party up. Left without Mr. Modi, you might well be back to a, you know, Vajpayee or a pre-Vajpayee era. Is that something of a concern for you at all? That all your eggs, in a, in a way, seem to be in the Modi mask, uh, basket. He is your sole vote catcher at the moment. But that's not correct. That's yeah. the wrong interpretation Why? of the data. Because... So, if you look at who else is popular, I don't agree with that, Amit but let Shah, me Yogi Adityanath. No, no, Amit, uh, Amit Shah, Yogi Adityanath are to succeed Modi. My point is, you asked a straight question. Why would you vote for BJP in 2024? Almost half the respondents who are voting for the BJP are saying Prime Minister Modi. You'll recall... No, but who CSDA? has the stronger bench strength? No, obviously, if you have Cristiano Ronaldo playing on the field, right. then he's your main player. Now, who's got other players who can come in? You saw what uh, the Home Minister did in Parliament, for example, during his speech, in the manner in which during the no-confidence motion he spoke. He's now coming at 29%. Let's have no, that no, question that's 29% the screen. Percent of best suited, suited to succeed, Prime Minister Modi. 26% for Yogi Adityanath, 15% for Nitin Gadkari. Between Shah and Yogi Adityanath, you have a deeper bench strength than anything in the opposition. No, no, my limited point, Rahul, you will recall a post-poll survey done after the 2019 elections of CSDS, Lokniti, which said one in every three voters said they voted for the BJ they were voted for the BJP only because of the Prime Minister, which means that a 37% vote would have come down possibly to 24-25. My point is the BJP's strength in Prime Minister Modi could be, as Rahul Verma pointed out, in the medium and long term a weakness. Why is the BJP not doing as well in state elections and general elections? Because Mr. Modi is not on the no, ticket. But that's a that's a bizarre analogy. No, no, why I'll, not? Tell, I'll tell you why. Mr. Modi, you, show uh, me MS, why. MS Dhoni is winning you the World Cup. Yes. He's your captain. He's won you the World Cup. He's still your captain. Agree. How is he a weakness? No, no. In a forced Modi dispensation, of course. The political decks will be rearranged as and when that happens. He's already made clear he's not retiring at 75. He's here at 2028 when the no-confidence motion is brought by the opposition. So he has no plans immediately of retiring. I, I'm only bringing what's happened in the last six months. In Himachal Pradesh, the BJP got 68% of the popular vote. In Lok assembly Sama. seats. The moment the assembly comes, they come down to 43-44. Look at what happened in Karnataka. A party which got 25 out of 28 but seats those in are Lok local, Sama. Board, local elections. No, no, local yes, elections. state elections. So I'm... I'm just pointing out the one concern that if I was a BJP strategist that I would have. That's all I'm pointing out. I see, I see merit in both the points, actually. I'm listening to you just besides here. Number one point is no, very, very, very... supposed to do yeah. this to give some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. You know, you know, then then somebody asked me this the other you know, day. I, somebody said, do Rahul and you do this to create tension in the studio. <laughs> I said, no, no, there's no tension. No, what I find funny, there's no problem. Is the fact that, you know, you know, Yes, it is true that majority of the BJP votes are coming because of the trustworthiness of the Prime Minister. That's all. Because on the issues thing, we ask every day and we also ask a follow-up question. Who, okay, this is your issue. Who do you think can find a solution for no, that? No, but can I just and build you know, on Rajdeep's argument and explain why I completely disagree with him? Your car has an engine. Let's assume it's a really mm -hmm. powerful engine. No matter which make of car, if it's, say, Atma Nirbhar, it's a Mahindra car with a really solid engine. You're saying, what if it didn't have this engine? But the engine is in the car. If it didn't have the engine, everything gets rearranged because no, that no, car no, I... wouldn't be in the race. But the, in the car has this solid engine, and that engine is powering the car to victory. Sure, Rajdeep. but what we are seeing in the last six months is when that, yes. a, when that engine that driver is not, is not, is not on the ticket, 
that same car no. is beginning to sputter. Fact, and remember, we are a country, therefore, that has 29 states. Now there are about more than a dozen states that are ruled by the opposition. Your engine driver is the sole face. It is a strategy and you have every right to use it. You will succeed with it. But in the success of that strategy could lie the recipe for future failures. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm just looking into the future when I look at these numbers. But if you look at the I India World Cup team or look yes. at in like the Australian team or the England team, you look at who they're playing 11 are. If some of those batsmen are not in the team, that's a different World Cup, that's a different match, Rajdeep. But you what can't happens win. in the future mm -hmm. when, say, something, someone is not there or something, is a different match, it's a different arrangement. I'll tell this you World now, Cup I'll... will be determined by who is in the <laughs> team in that World Cup. Okay, I'll make, therefore, my final point on this is that it also offers, therefore, as Rahul Verma rightly said, a strategy for the opposition. You see, the opposition has consistently made the mistake of focusing relentlessly on Mr. Modi. Their reflex reaction is, if Mr. Modi does something, we've got to oppose it. And therefore, he becomes the central figure. The opposition's challenge in this election leading up to 2021, the mood of the nation, reflects that. How do you localize uh, the election? How exactly. do I you can't localize right? the Lok Sabha exactly. election? No, no you, you can't. can't localize. Localize. No, your challenge is that. It's a challenge. It's it a may challenge. not happen. You are right. There's a strong possibility it won't happen. But that's your hope. Your hope in these numbers is when you say most important issue, about more than 60% are linking it to issues linked to their economic condition. Okay. We looked at the popularity of the government. Let's spend some time on how the voters of this country perceive the opposition. So the first question that was asked by C Voter for India today when we are tracking the opposition is, can the India Alliance beat the BJP? So here are the responses to this question. Can the India Alliance beat the BJP? 33% of the respondents in this Mood of the Nation poll saying that yes, this can happen. 54% uh, saying no, that cannot happen. So 54% of the respondents don't seem to think the India Alliance can beat the BJP. Uh, after this, let's come to the next question. What's the opinion on the name India? What's your opinion on the name India? Here are the responses to that question. This will fetch additional votes, say 39% of the respondents. Won't fetch votes, say 30% of the respondents. Neither a catchy name nor will it fetch votes, say 18% of the respondents. But there is some traction. You can't take away the fact that India has 39% traction. So it's not a bad idea or a failure. There is some purchase there. Interesting that 39% say this opposition name India will get traction. You could argue what's in a name, but it's a substantial number, you'd think. So clearly, uh, Rahul Verma, a name like India gets traction. Uh, it appears at the moment, at least the opposition has got one thing right. They've got a decent name. Uh, yes, Rajdeep, I don't want to uh, disagree on the name. Uh, so this is also... Uh, name of our country. But I think, you know, uh, two points. One, people at the end are not going to, they don't vote for alliance. They vote for political parties and candidates. So yes, by getting the name, by getting those two meetings and moving forward, I think opposition parties have done a half a decent chance and perhaps their best efforts in last nine years. Whether it can actually catapult them to take on BJP and beat them, I think uh, that's too far at the moment. Even the 39% or 40% number you are uh, suggesting, think of it. Basically, what we are getting a divide into 40 to 60 ratio. Even if you look at the question on uh, uh, government performance, you had 60% people who were basically saying BGP has done well, 20% dissatisfied, and 20% no opinion. And so that's what my first point was in the intervention which is a large portion of people have already made up their mind where they are tilting. And so this 39% who's saying that it's a decent name is largely who are already voting for uh, 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 opposition parties, perhaps some additional votes from uh, 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 you know, non-aligned and, and uh, non-identifiers at the moment. Right. If you add the 30% uh, people who said, it won't get them vote and 18%, it's not a catchy name. That's the 48-50%. Let's, so let's look at, let's look at from there. Different. I take your point. Let's look at best suited to lead India. In January 2022, Rahul Gandhi was at 11%. In August 2023, about 20 months later, he's at 24%. So this is, remember, best suited to lead the opposition. 
Mamta Banerjee was 17%, went up to 20% in August 2022, is now down to 15%, but she comes in number two, joined with Mr. Kejriwal, who at his peak in August 2022 was actually twice as much as Rahul Gandhi at 27%. So Rahul Gandhi has doubled in the last 18 months, and even compared to January 2023, he's up from 13% to 2024. And when you are asked the opinion on Rahul Gandhi's disqualification, 31% said fair decision. Harsh decision was 21%. Politically motivated was 31%. You add the last two, it's about 52%. So Rahul Gandhi, interestingly, within the opposition space, only Rohan Gupta seems to have gained. It's not as if he's gained vis-a-vis -vis Prime Minister Modi. He's only gaining within the opposition. And that builds on what Rahul Varma said, that those who've decided to vote for Mr. Modi and the BJP, they have no time for India or Rahul Gandhi. It's only within the opposition that Rahul Gandhi's traction has increased. I don't agree with this analysis because as uh, we have seen, as I told in my earlier uh, uh, point, that when you look at the state elections, BJP has no other issue than Mr. Modi. They do not have governance issue, so they do not have that performance of the government to be shown. Only thing they fight is either Modi or Hindutva. And in the, in Karnataka, you are also there, Rajdeep. I think they gave it all, everything, Mr. Modi's roadshow, Hindu, Muslim, and after that, also if they lose badly, I think we are missing something very, very huge. We cannot forget that price rise and all these issues are very, very important. No, number no, we one, are number about two. Rahul Gandhi, no, Rahul, Gupta. Gupta. Rahul yes. Gandhi's traction I'm has good. increased within the I'm, opposition. I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm coming to. I'm coming to Mr. Rahul Gandhi's point. If you see more than 50% people think that either the decision is harsh or wrong. And after that decision, I think it has really boomeranged on BJP. Rahul Gandhi's image is, is increasing day by day because people have realized that something wrong has happened to him. And you will see in future that this is whatever gap you are showing. I don't agree if this with you. Yes, gap, Deshmuk, we wouldn't have the Congress thinks BJP. Rahul Gandhi's graph is on the way up. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. One is that, yes, relative to how low he'd fallen, he's bouncing back. The other is he's coming back to kind of where he was at his peak. So it's not as if he's come close to Prime Minister Modi. He's fallen and he's kind of bounced back to where he was, where he's first amongst the opposition leaders in terms of popularity. But given the fact that the Congress is the only pan-India national opposition party, that really shouldn't even be a question. Well, they think that Rahul Gandhi's numbers are up because the voter tracker has been showing consistently that the numbers are going up. But that's a... 50% of the numbers that they are trusting. The other half uh, problem is that they are unwilling to accept that, uh, you know, this way up, as you just mentioned, is from the rock bottom where he was two years back, where there were three opposition leaders scoring more than Rahul Gandhi. You know, and then from there in Bharat Jodo Yatra, we did a tracker on Bharat Jodo Yatra where it started improving. Post Karnataka, the numbers have also improved further. But it is courtesy, the numbers of Arvind Kejriwal, uh, they are dropping. Numbers of Mamta Banerjee, that is dropping. So others in the India alliance, that is dropping. And Rahul Gandhi is consolidating. That's the fact. But the problem with this entire uh, scene is, this is not going to create much of an electoral impact till the point of time Rahul Gandhi's numbers start increasing at the cost of numbers of Mr. Narendra Modi. That's the issue. Unless because that kind of thing like happens, is an anomaly. electorally it Given is that not his going party to make was only impact. in Delhi and Punjab, he really ought not to have been the number one opposition leader. The fact that he was suggests how bad Rahul Gandhi's ratings were. Rahul Gandhi's kind of bounced back after falling low. How do you see the Rahul's glass? Rahul glass, half full or half empty? And before you yeah. come, Raj, and you can sure. respond to that because you know India today had Rahul Gandhi. I remember on the cover. Uh, after uh, the December 2018 elections. And, you know, he was seen as suddenly the real game changer. Now what seems to have happened, opinion on Rahul Gandhi after Bharat Jodo. No, I, I need improved, to go ahead. Improved is... Uh, go ahead. Okay. Go with so, those numbers uh, because that will give uh, Raj a chance to explain this. Okay, so on the question of the Bharat Jodo Yatra and people's perception of it, has the Bharat Jodo Yatra improved the perception around Rahul Gandhi? Here are the responses in this poll. 44% of the sample said that Rahul Gandhi's perception has improved as a result of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. 
33% saying it's the same, 13% say it's worsened. So what's clear is they're ratching up is that the Bharat Jodo Yatra has salvaged a reputation which was pretty much in the political dust. So he's come back to some extent. Now whether you think he's rising like a phoenix or it'll still just be, you know, a bonsai and won't really become a full big banyan tree. You can play around with different kinds of metaphors and analogies, but that's the reality. You're seeing the glass is half empty or half full. Well, let's look at this way, that, as you rightly said, he was down in the dumps, and he has certainly, and very innovatively, let's give him credit for it, uh, and the fact that he'd walked all this distance across and raised issues of concern to the country, he has, in many senses, matured, reinvented himself, whatever words you'd like to do it, Bharat Jodo Yatra has given Rahul Gandhi the push, and if you'd like to look at it Yeshwan's way, it has helped him considerably, whether it has made him challenge Mo, uh, Prime Minister Modi, or has just uh, you know, overtaken the other opposition leaders. The, the fact remains, he's now become, once again, the principal challenger to uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi when it comes to uh, op the, the opposition putting up a candidate. The other interesting development, and I think you should look at this together, they're not separate. The fact that India as an alliance was formed at the same time. And, you know, the Congress allowed this. Normally, it was the Congress that said, we are not going to be uh, giving our leadership up to any of the other parties. So you now have a very interesting development that has happened, where finally all the big guns of the opposition have got together, whether it is Mamta Banerjee, whether it is Nitish Kumar, who, who was always on the other camp. Uh, on, uh, in the south, you have Stalin. You know, you have now built up, and in Maharashtra, you have the Shiv Sena coming in. NCP was always there. So uh, the BJP, and you can see that they are feeling threatened in many senses by the way they moved in Maharashtra to bring up Ajit Pawar. This is not, the numbers may not reflect it, but this is certainly a very important development that has happened. And given that though, you know, Mr. Modi's popularity remains very high, the concerns that no, you're saying they're been... rattled, I could say they're being overcautious. Not they want to no, win just, big, I, you know, in let, the way the finish. BJP sees this. Let me this. just finish. Yeah. The fact is that you have economic concerns as high as that we saw, what we said as the failures of the uh, government that is there. This gives them an opportunity. If the opposition is able to get, to get its act together, has rallying points like uh, price rise, unemployment, they, I think, what the, the combination of Bharat Jodo Yatra and the Indian Alliance now will start beginning begin to pose a formidable threat to Prime Minister Modi. And therefore, the, the BJP has to be even more uh, you know, careful about how it deals with the next nine months. You know, it's very interesting. Your mood of the nation first half clearly shows Mr. Modi towers over all else. What is interesting now is for the first time after about, say, at least 24 months, you're seeing Rahul Gandhi emerging as the mascot and the face of the opposition. Only Look at, opposition leader. No, you know, very interesting. And this is Rahul's performance as opposition <coughs> leader. 34% saying outstanding, 18% saying good, which is 52%. So clearly something has been done by Rahul Gandhi, maybe because he's been See, much more... Something was been, the, precisely the thing that was required, Rajdeep. People wanted him to walk. People wanted him to go in the field. So People that's wanted what? him to work like a leader that leader is supposed to do. Rahul Gandhi had taken a kind of a voluntary sannyas for almost like two and a half years. So his numbers just plummeted in the, in the, in the tracker as well. But the moment he started going into the, the moment he started his Bharat Jodo Yatra, the moment he entered Karnataka and you know that kind of consolidated the warring factions of Siddha Ramaya and DK Shukumar, that resulted in no, Karnataka So Rahul victory. Varma, he seems to be doing enough to be leader of the opposition but nowhere close to doing enough to be able to actually challenge Prime Minister Modi. And, and, and to add to what Rahul uh, says here, uh, Rahul Verma, there will be those within the BJP who will say, bring it on. Huh. Because they seem to believe that he is their perfect enemy. That if we can make this election, if the opposition wants, about Modi versus Rahul, we are ready for it. Do you believe That's that the opposition should be looking at these numbers and saying, okay, Rahul Gandhi will be our face. They are meeting next week in Mumbai. Should they be saying that they will have a face or should they be very cautious and do what I seem to believe is the way forward for them, which is localize the elections? So which so way should me, they go? So, so let me make a couple of points. First, it's very clear uh, and uh, I agree with Yashwan Bhai on this, which is uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi's numbers are improving because he has hit rock bottom. And two, there was some sense of synergy or some sense of like, 
you know, euphoria with Aam Admi Party and TMC. TMC after the West Bengal victory, and they were trying to move in Meghalaya and Goa, and then uh, with AAP's victory in Punjab. I think that has fizzled out with Bharat Jodo Yatra. If the big purpose of Bharat Jodo Yatra was for Congress to basically bring back Rahul Gandhi to the center stage, they have succeeded in doing that. Now, I don't think even if co Congress so far has cautiously said that we are in not the leadership race, I don't think that's going to be there till the end of this year. Uh, by doing many things, including, uh, uh, you know, Congress rushed to uh, file the no confidence motion, which created some sort of like flutters. I think this is the biggest challenge for the opposition now when they meet in Mumbai and later on. First, uh, whether uh, there is going to be a central party around which the nucleus is going to be formed, that's clearly Congress. But are they going to select a face or not? Now, you know, because because there is a paradox in both what the BJP confronts, and I reflected it to Rahul that you know, Mr. Modi is your face, but when he's not on the ticket, you don't do as well. The Congress's problem is very interesting. When the question is asked, is the Congress better off without the Gandhis? 49% in your poll are saying yes, one in every two. What it means is the BJP voter, who or a voter who shifted from Congress to BJP maybe in the last decade, is saying probably the Congress is better off without the Gandhis. No, only 34%. So the Congress, the floating voter, seems to have a problem with the Gandhis. No. But the Congress's core voter is very much with Rahul Gandhi. But, and I think that's the real question. Because remember, how does the Congress revive without getting the floating no, voter? The, the floating was, voter is not going with Rahul Gandhi. When the question was asked about the performance of the Congress as an opposition party, 43% of the respondents said good. Now that's the highest approval rating the Congress has had in a very long time. Average was 17, poor was 32. And over the last year or so, Malikarjun Kharge has been running the Congress. There is a message exactly. there. There is a message there that the Congress's perception as the party in the opposition has actually become better. And linked to it is the fact that 15% more people think the Congress is better off without the Gandhis than with the Gandhis. A very see, strong message. Yeah, there. you see, what it is, Rahul, is that basically the Congress voter, and I may want to make this clear distinction, the Congress voter believes that Rahul Gandhi is their mascot and strongly believes so. That's the 19, 20 percent. Yeah, that, that's right. It could go up to 24 as it is maximum. Right? No, no, 19, 20 is 20, where they yeah, fall. But here you've given 24 percent are saying that Rahul Gandhi could be the face of the opposition. My point is, within the BJP voters or the floating voters, those who've not voted in recent elections, they actually seem to see the Gandhis as an Achilles heel of the party. Some of them seem to see, 43% seem to see the Congress's role as, as good, but 49% are saying Congress better off without the Gandhis. My point is, the Congress's strength is Rahul Gandhi in, in galvanizing. A it's a weakness as well. But it could be a weakness. As it's I said, thing. Prime yeah. Minister Modi is the big strength of the BJP, but its over-reliance on Mr. Modi means that the double engine of the BJP concept is not case, working. In any case, that double so engine that, narrative is not working. The you double engine is not that's working, not working because, because in the same MOT, and we have seen time after time, that among the top-rated chief ministers of India, Hardly one or two are from the BJP, rest are from all Rupesh of the well. Yeah, yeah. So all Nadeem of them Patnai are from opposition. Well. I think the top top ranking BJP chief minister Yogi is actually Himanta Biswa Sarma. No, not even Yogi. It's Himanta Biswa Sarma who is ranks. State. Yeah, in, in his own state. So what I'm simply trying to say is that, yes, uh, without the Congress as the central lead, there is no opposition unity as far as the opposition voters are concerned. Without the Gandhi in the center, there cannot be leadership as far as the core Congress voters are concerned. But Radhip, you are bang on. It's the swing vote which has shifted to the BJP. That is still saying no, but that's that, you know, number. this is not no, something. No, that that you know, therefore puts the dilemma for the this dilemma India for Alliance. Yeah, exactly. The India Alliance will be under pressure to make the Congress the nucleus of the alliance and project Rahul Gandhi. However, at the same time, if I'm going to attract uh, the floating voter who switch sides, I may not want to make it a leadership and, contest yeah. between Modi and Rahul because then I'm running the same risk that I ran in 2014 and 19. You see, that's the fascinating part of one more thing. See, the BJP you know, has realized, put our eggs in Modi's basket, it's working. You see, he is our face, we can go. So there's clarity no, there. But you can only lay on your the other eggs side, in a basket no that can lay a golden egg. No, so otherwise, other. there's no point in laying your now eggs in that one basket. Thing, credit credit no, the you. other side credit doesn't know what, what to put in the basket. No, but yet. One, one more thing now, credit where are due. Mr. Khadge has been kind of a stabilizer oh, over absolutely. here. You know, because all of a sudden, in our daily tracker, when we talk about the Congress leadership, how they perceive, I mean, uh, the president, 
we see the moment Mr. Khadge comes in, that red line of net negativity drops down. Because he's done a good job. There is a big number of don't know countries, I understand that, but he doesn't carry that kind of negativity among the anti-Congress voters. He's not a polarizing figure. He is not a polarizing figure. both Modi, both Mr. Modi and Rahul Gandhi in very different ways are polarizing figures. Listen, if you're going to lay your eggs in a basket, please do it with a hen that can lay a golden egg. Otherwise, it's of no use. You can, you know, put all your eggs in that basket. If it's not a golden egg, what purpose is it serving? Rahul, actually? the problem is, the, uh, uh, the way it is, the BJP knows what golden egg to put in its basket. After this poll, the India alliance will be confused. Oh, Kaun sa anda dalna hai? Nee, anda nee, kaun si murgi dalni hai jisse anda niklega raha hai? Kaun si murgi, but kaun si kaun si murgi se golden egg niklega? Ah, golden egg. What is that golden okay. egg? No, so he, here's here's my theory. Both the BJP and the Congress at one point in time have at least 20% voters who are their co-voters. The BJP increased its vote share to 17%. A large part of that 17% could arguably come because of the pull of Prime Minister Modi. Over a period of time, the likes of Amit Shah and the others think that they've been able to increase the BJP's core vote from 20 at least to 25, 26. That's where they think the BJP's core vote stands. But uh, the Congress's core vote is at 20. Till the time the Congress can increase its core vote, you are not in the game. Rahul, there is one figure I keep throwing at people and this is a figure which tells you what how India has changed in the last 10 years. In 2009, the Congress got 11 crore votes. The BJP got 7 crore votes, 7 point something. In 2019, the BJP got nearly 22 crores. The Congress still got about 11.5%. So the Congress vote has remained static. The BJP vote has almost tripled. Unless you are going to change, unless new voters come to you, you're not going to win an election. That's the challenge for the India Opposition Alliance. The biggest question answered in the Mood of the Nation opinion poll is who will form the next government if elections were held today? We'll try and answer that question uh, on the basis of the results of this survey.